Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to episode 26 of Thick and Thin with LB, Duty and Bacon. Dookie and Bacon. Dookie Bacon. Uh, with me, as always, the man with the plan, the guy who's typing. I don't even know what you're doing right now. You're doing other work. LB, S-U-T-K. <laughs> I was typing, but I had it on mute right. to try to keep down the noise. It's terrible. Uh, what's up, everybody? <sighs> Anyway, the Canadian with the shitty mic, the guy we try to get rid of every week, he just stays. He just won't go away. It's Roger, up. Hitman, what's going on, buddy? What's going on? Not much. Not much. How's Canada? Um, warm. Does Pretty it, warm. Does it always, Warmer than usual. Does it always feel like an almost America? Yes. Yeah. We're always trying to be more like you guys, like the big brother. You're almost there, but you're just it's just <laughs> not yet. And special guest this week... You know her as the editor chief, tooltoplay.com, the greatest website in the world. Tiffany, Electrify, Fari, or Nolan. What should we do? I don't even know now. Right? Um, well, it's not Nolan yet. Soon. But Soon. hello. There's still time. Run away. Yeah, I know. Now. Believe me, I'm <laughs> trying. <laughs> Good quick edit that. No, yeah. Um, so, yeah, this week we kind of have a little special thing going on. Um, if you guys recall, first of all, last week. Uh, we want to thank Gunner Optic. Actually, it was a pretty good show. Uh, a lot of people actually ended up buying some Gunners at the end of the show, which I thought was pretty cool. I uh, got a lot of people like sent me some PMs. Ken, Ken Wan, the man from uh, Tool to Play, one of our fellow <laughs> friends, he bought two pair after the show. He was like all excited. He was like, "That, that blows are... my mind, dude." That Ken, who like barely games, if anything anymore, he's like, "I gotta buy two. Yeah, he doesn't even play video games. But he saw it and he was like, "Well." I got to buy it. He said he had to do it for his Asian bro- brethren. That was what he said. So he told me. <laughs> anyway, so that was a great show. Um, and we want to say thank you for to having, uh, having Midnight on and having them kind of come in and do some stuff. Next week, before we get on to this week's stuff, we're actually going to have the developer. Um, I think it's going to be either the, either the developer or the actual PR guy. I can't remember who we booked to come on, but I think it's the PR guy. PR um, guy. Yeah, right? Yeah. From uh, Natural Selection 2 is a video game that actually me and Derek went to go see um, at E3 that we really liked. They're building it off of, uh, I think, the Source engine. I can't remember what engine they used. Or did they rebuild that engine? I can't remember. But anyway, it's a really cool game. It's, they're using the, the um, that, I think, one of the engines to build up their own sort of asynchronistic gaming where it's an FPS and an RTS all rolled into one. What that means is... You get to control an FPS character. You go around and shoot shit. But at the same time, you can look at it from an RTS perspective and build like little plots and all these other things. And so there's two games kind of going on at the same time, which we thought was really, really cool. Uh, And they were super nice and said, yeah, we'd love to come on. So next week, same time, same bat channel, all that stuff. We're going to do some asynchronistic gaming. But the big news for Tool to Play is we actually have finally started the Kickstarter for the Too Old to Play Chicago Land Party, November 9th through the 11th in Schaumburg, Illinois, for the release of Halo 4. Dun, dun, dun. LB, are you super excited for this? Uh, well, You're I'm not. excited for it. Yes, I'm very excited for it. Uh, you might not hopefully. be able to go, though. Yeah, we hopefully. might have to start a Kickstarter specifically for LB <laughs> that is on tandem with our other Kickstarter where we all try to get him to go. But uh, but anyway, yeah, so if you're interested and you want to go and you're an older gamer, you got to be over the age of 25. If you want to come on in, fly into Chicago, we're going to do tournaments. We're going to do a land. I think we've confirmed we're finally doing tournaments. We've got some people that said that they will actually put those up. So that's cool. Um, but we'll provide the monitors. We'll provide the networking. We'll provide the Internet. We'll provide the power. All you have to do is bring your system of choice. PS3 would probably not be the best of those choices since most will bring an xbox but pc certainly is okay um and we're gonna have i think for sure obviously halo 4 it'd be kind of ironic to just do it that weekend and be like no halo 4 we don't play that here so halo 4 uh borderlands everyone's saying that they're gonna bring which i'm too i'm I'm really into borderlands now it's not even out yet and i'm super excited for that game (laughs) and um guild wars 2 and diablo 3 i wonder if people are gonna actually play diablo 3 it's gonna be interesting so those are the games we have planned. Um, so if you want to come around, come around. It's 100 bucks. You go to Kickstarter right now. You get yourself, uh, secure yourself in the land. But we've got some cool stuff as well because we're really good at, you know, enticing you to come. 
So LB, what can you can we get a little taste of some of the cool rewards that they might get if they they hop over? Listen. The line? There is one there that if I somehow get the money and can participate, mm -hmm. I want to do the pledge 200 or more. Now, what does the pledge 200 or more get you, LB? This, <laughs> this duty is smooth. 200 for one hour during the land. D smooth and or duty will personally fetch you beverages and snacks. Though you still have to pay for said beverages and snacks and generally be at your beck and call. See, I've been threatened by this all day today. <laughs> oh, my God. This is the strangest thing. It's like no one's bought it, but everyone's threatening to buy it. Well, I think I'm just like get in with some guys there, even if we like pitch together just to get it and just have you be beverage bitch wow. for that hour. That's terrible. What do you think about that, Tiff? I think it's an awesome idea. And actually, <laughs> if I had the money, I would totally get that myself. Yeah, everyone seems to be like that's like the thing that they want to buy. Do they yeah. want it? Because they want to hurt people's feelings. That's what they said. And then See, I think if the, we get a group together, you can come in with us. Oh, you can kind of we'll pull the cast together. Awesome. I, I feel yeah, like that's I'd, not allowed. I'd be all over that. You know, I don't even know why there was an or there because there's no <laughs> doubt I would pick both. <laughs> <laughs> that's what that's what someone said that I think uh, I think it was Rao. He said, yeah, you know, I kind of want to get the duty one, but I also want to get can I just give you 400 bucks and we can just call it a day? It's like, Jesus, <laughs> you guys are mean. They're mean. And that's why we did it, because we know people are mean, and they'll, and they'll do those things. And then uh, the other one that I got a lot, of, <laughs> a lot of things for was actually coming on the podcast. And a lot of people did said, really? yeah, a lot of people said, well, I kind of want to do the come on the podcast one, because I want to be able to get on there and totally ruin all your shit. Again, what is the How can you ruin our show? Just kind of come I mean, on and ask stupid questions <laughs> and generally be an asshole. Kind of like what you do all the time, every show. Nice. Nice. But like, you know, on purpose. It takes practice. It takes practice. Oh. So yeah, uh, we don't want to spend too much time on that because we got a cool topic. But again, we finally have launched it. It will be at the Hyatt Regency in Schaumburg, Illinois. Uh, we have not got the, we have the group rates set. I think it's 75 bucks for a king, 85 bucks for a double. Uh, you can do an upgrade to a VIP room for, I think, 100 bucks. So it's a pretty good deal. But uh, they don't have the group rates set in the system yet. So if you're watching it live right now, wait. If, you're, if this video comes out on Friday, which it normally does, then go ahead. You'll probably have it by then. But we'll have a little thing up on tooltoplay.com slash LAN, L-A-N, which will give a bunch more information once we have it. You'll be able to kind of click and register from there. So we're pretty excited about it. We got to reach the 5,000 mark. What are we at right now? Uh, 1600 bucks 1655 1655 to be exact so yeah the land's only been active for a couple hours and there we go we're not even halfway there so hopefully we get there but um moving on this week's topic is pretty i think it's a pretty cool one i was hoping that we had more time to promote it this week to get more people to come especially more women because uh believe it or not the male chauvinist pigs of tnt are going to do a show about girl gamers or like, well, oh, I think I said, what did I say to you? Tiffany said, we're not, we're just gamers that are girls, right? That's the, yes, but you're stealing all my content. Oh, I'm sorry. I gotta wait for it. Nice job, yeah. duty. That's, yeah, I can't, yeah. you know, I like to step on toes here. That's okay. Well, I'm done. All right. What do you guys have to say? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for coming out. Appreciate it. Thank you. No, um, but that's that's kind of the topic that I think we we're looking to, to get into. And uh, it's a weird topic because obviously we're three dudes and we really have no clue. So we figured why why pretend, right? Uh, so we want to have Tiff in here and, and kind of talk about it. And I think the first thing um, that I wanted to get into is really the topic of advertising. Because for, for a guy like me, pretty much any guy, we like to bitch that... You know, all the advertising is for 18 year olds and kids and this and that. Uh, and then we don't have any advertising for us as the older dude. And it's really always geared towards the kids. But I think on top of that, the reality is that it's totally geared towards the male gender. And it's really and I think I think most of us will agree to that. Um, and we make up I, I want to say the what I read um, in terms of stats is we make up about 80 percent of the, uh, the gaming population males do versus women. So that's a pretty significant base. Um, and I got to say, do you think, uh, I'll start with you, Tiff, obviously, is do you think that sort of advertising base and, and the way they attack it directly relates to why there are so few women in gaming? Is it is it the advertising you think that skews those numbers or wh like what do you think it, it comes down to in that in that sense? 
So we're at like the chicken or the egg. Right. Exactly. Um, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I, I think it is just like the chicken or the egg. I mean, you can't really have one without the other. Um, I think that if there were more female gamers, notice I said not girls, female <laughs> gamers, um, then, you know, I think there would definitely be more advertising geared towards them. But then also there is so much geared towards the guys that it's, it's definitely hard for many females to get into gaming. Yeah. Because it is looked at as a, a male pastime. So you're, you're kind of of the, of the opinion that if we had, if we sort of welcomed girl gamers, female gamers into that, into the, into the fold, then the advertising would just follow. That'd be just kind of like the natural thing. Cause they'll, they'll absolutely. Right. Gotcha. I mean, wh what do you think LB? Why do you think that, that it's kind of gone this way for so long? Well, I mean, generally, from the games I play, you know, you're playing first-person shooter, you're playing the so-called, you know, rough-and-tumble games or whatever, you know. Little boys are always taught, you know, play cowboys and Indians and da-da-da, and a lot of times girls are not. So maybe it stems somewhere from there. Um, I do like more that that is going out the door, and it's not that, because, you know, Tiff plays a lot of different types of games. She's not... A specific type of gamer and she can enjoy one or enjoy another one and that's why I think if you really are a gamer you're gonna play games you're not just gonna be like well I'm only gonna play FPS or or I'm a dude I can't play I don't know dance do dance revolution right yeah dance dance revolution yeah. that Ken <laughs> loves playing <laughs> or you know the, the Barbie game that you play on the side right you know, of course you mm -hmm. can you can feel free to play those and have a good time. So, I mean, do you think, and I guess that kind of feeds into the next question of, uh, of the, of just general social stereotyping. Um, do you think that kind of is the, the first barrier that's put up is just like you said, I mean, we're kind of brought up as let's, you know, let's play war games. Let's, let's do sports games. You know, that's just kind of how the male gender is brought up. We're, you know, we're all about kicking ass and taking aims. That's, that's the deal. And well, so that might be, part of it but you know more and more you'll see in the news now you'll see like female fighter pilots you'll see female tank drivers or whatever and then you'll see female war heroes so i think you know that you're gonna see a lot more like oh hey maybe it's not just a guy thing maybe it's just an anybody thing and you'll start to see more people or you know more females come in and and play maybe more aggressive games so do you think then i guess tiff do you think maybe you have to you feel like the need to maybe break through those social barriers just to get into games like you have to sort of play the war games play the fps or whatever just to sort of be a part of it or i mean do you do you want to see different types of games geared towards you i guess well i mean i think w it depends on what types of games you're talking about because when you look at casual games and like facebook games and things like that i mean i guarantee the number of females playing those games Oh, yeah. is way higher than the number of guys. So so in that case, you know, there's definitely more girls playing. But when you're looking at more of the traditional console games, I, I definitely feel like, you know, I'll, I know a lot of girls that play games. And, and that's probably because I started out in the PMS clan. And that's right. how I, you know, got a lot of girlfriends. Right. And, you know... I'd be kind of interested in how many girls do you guys know other than me that plays first person shooters? That's a really good point. I, I mean, yeah, that's a good point. that is a really good point. I mean, I don't think, I mean, even on a site like tool to play, you know, we're, we're of an older generation and I, I think at least now it's being more accepted to be a, a female gamer and, and play video games. I think that now is, is a, a more of a norm than possibly our generation 30 plus you know, when I was growing up, no girls played video games. I mean, seriously, my, and it was weird because, you know, I'm, I'm of a family of, I'm a middle, I'm the middle guy and I've got an older brother, but my little sister, who's six years younger than me, that's, she learned gaming. That's what she did. Cause that's what her big brother did. So she played games and a lot of her friends thought that was really, really weird. Like that thought that was odd. And she grew out of playing games, maybe out of the necessity that there wasn't a place for her. Um, where now there seems to be that place. Like there seems to actually be something there. So yeah, I don't know. It's it, I, and it feels, it feels kind of shitty. I mean, it, it really to have to sort of be kicked out of something, um, because you don't fit that, that role. 
um, is crappy, but maybe that's it. Maybe it's because we don't have, I don't know, like hit, do you play, do you know a lot of girl gamers? And like, I mean, do they play with you in your circle in terms of halo and stuff or no? Uh, no, not a consistent female. Um, I do know girl gamers. I know a pro gamer. That's a girl. Of course. Um, but not she's not she doesn't even play first person shooters. I, I rarely play Halo with her. Um, she's more of a guitar hero kind of girl. Okay. But um, no, not not too many. I, I don't even run into that many in matchmaking either. Now that you mention it. Well, and that kind of like that kind of leads me into the the other question of it. We seem to feed into this whole thing of of sort of segregating girl gamers. And, you know, pushing them to the side when you do see them in like a matchmaking situation or, you know, any stuff. Because I I can vividly recall like when me and Derek were first starting playing Halo and it was like Mike James and a couple other people. We had a couple girlfriend gamers that we'd we'd game with these. And these are, you know, older women, like I said, because we're from an older gamers guild. And we'd go into matchmaking. And the first thing you would hear was like, you fucking lesbian or you're totally a dude. Like it's, it's, it's almost like right when the girl starts doing well or they perform at a level that's better than the guy, they're immediately com- like, I mean, just completely, you know, I mean, in general guys are going to hum- humiliate each other, but when it comes to the women, they go, you know, I mean, they go ape shit. And a lot the, the of it was you, having to have a thick the skin. You run into one in matchmaking, everyone in the room just smells the blood in the water and they're like, Oh, a girl's in a room. And it just gives them an excuse to just go, crazy on the girl yeah i mean I've it's seen it so many times oh, it, oh yeah absolutely i mean right. that's one of the reasons that i i joined a female gaming clan in right. the first place is because i wanted somewhere uh, to go and have you know kind of a, a safe place to be able to to play and game and get better at first person shooters because man let me tell you those those halo matchmaking <laughs> rooms i can't even imagine, wow. I can't even imagine. Like, like i have like, never heard some of those things come out of anybody's mouth. Like even Derek's like, he doesn't even say stuff like that. (laughs) I mean, and that's, that's totally the thing is it's like, it's the anonymity, obviously of the internet. It's everyone, you know, no, she's not going to know. And they immediately go for the juggler jugular. It's like, you're, you're fat, you're ugly, you're a dude. I mean, I've heard it all, you know, from, from having just other girls in, in the room with me at the time. And I don't even know how you guys survive that shit. I mean, if it, if you have to go through that every time you drop, you get into matchmaking, does it deter you from playing Halo on your own? Like, do you, or do you feel like you always have to be in a group? I mean, how does that work for you? I don't think so. I mean, the mute button's definitely your friend. Um, you right. know, there there are definitely times where I'll just go in a game by myself, but I won't say anything. Like, I'll be scared to say anything because I don't want anybody to know that I'm You're a girl. Right. <laughs> But is it, is the first, it? Yeah, the first thing I'm always asked is, "How old are you? Are you 12?" Right. You know, like. Yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> and and then when you do well, do you feel like that automatically puts your head on the chopping block as well? Because they're sort of, I guess, threatened. Or I mean, like, have you kind of gone to that situation where you, you know, you get a sick headshot or whatnot, and they know there's a chick in the room and it's you? I I, I would almost assume a, a part of that might be a little empowering in the sense that you're kicking a dude's ass. I mean, do you ever get that feeling or is it just sort of like, you know, Hey, I'm just playing video games here. No, it's definitely a good feeling. (laughs) (laughs) I remember when I was at, um, PAX East earlier this year, I went stop by the, um, it was the turtle beach booth and they had a little halo set up there and I decided to try out the headphones and you know, the guy there that was running the booth, was playing Halo against me, and I totally kicked his ass. <laughs> nice. And it was just, it was hilarious, and it, it felt good, because right. you you know going up there that he was probably thinking, oh, man, you know, she's going to suck. You know, why is she even trying this? And just to show that, you know, <laughs> hey, I know how to play Halo. I can do a first-person shooter. Right. It was cool. It was a good feeling. And then I guess on the flip side, hit when you get your ass whooped by a chick, how do you feel about that? I mean, are you... Are you That's, okay with that? Or does gender still play a role in that sense where you're like, I can't let this girl beat me. I can't, I can't let this girl beat me. It's so funny. You, uh, you, you were reading my mind. I was actually going to come on and reverse that question right. on you guys. Um, but you hit me first. Um, <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> yeah. If I know there's a girl in the room, I, I don't know. It just, I don't know if it's just me or the guys I play with, but 
you can't let the girl beat you or <laughs> it gives you that added incentive to do better um like it motivates you more i guess that's what i've noticed right whenever there's a girl in the room um but yeah it, it d- definitely gives you something to fight more over. so you've got a so like you saying you noticeably step up your game like you're not yeah you're if you're playing at one level you're like all right there's a chick here i gotta let's fucking buckle down I, let's do i gotta it. sit up now i gotta sit up straight. right yeah <laughs> there's always that one guy in the room that like maybe one game does worse than the girl and then and then the rest of the guys like wolves just gang on him like oh you're worse than the girl uh, like yeah it's always it always comes down to that so there's always yeah because you know men smell blood and as soon as they smell blood in yeah. the water and they see okay. someone's fallen and they're limping. They don't go to help that person up. They immediately mom, mom mentality. Yeah, they kick they kick them in the nuts <laughs> and they 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 run away. What about you, Albi? Do you do you try to step up your your lack of game? I'm sorry, your game. <laughs> Actually, I really don't give a shit. Really? <laughs> tell you the truth. No. So it doesn't bother you. You're not like worried to lose, or you don't have that sort of burst of adrenaline to try to you know take down the chick. Or no, I oh, don't. If if they're a better gamer than me, which. 90% of the population is true, but you know, they beat me. What, what truly irritates me <laughs> is like, if you have like a little 10 year old or something like that, who just sounds like they're, I don't know, they're, they're playing and then texting and then, you know, <laughs> creating something over here and they're shitting on me while I'm fully like, you know, just throwing right. into the game. I don't care if it's female. I don't care if it's, you know, whatever you You just don't like getting shit on period is what you're basically saying uh well yeah but gender doesn't matter at that point no well i mean that's i I only like really focus like i don't i understand shit talking and everything that's that's fine but if you just got like an asshole in a room male or female yeah i want to come and you know shank you in the back right okay you know good day i think i'm somewhere in the middle because i i definitely i hate to lose i mean i can't that's just general i mean it doesn't matter you know, white, black, Asian, tall, small girl, dude, I do not want to lose. So in that respect, I think it just in general, I, you know, I, I try to, when I'm getting beaten, I get, I have that surge of, of adrenaline and I want to focus. I want to kick ass, but I will say if a girl walks into the room and I'm playing, even if she's on my team, like that's a the thing, there is a certain mentality. I think even when they're on my team of, well, I should at least have a higher KPD than her. Right. Like that. I should at least be able to do that, Uh, which is strange because, you know, you're not physically in this atmosphere. You're not actually doing anything. You've got a controller in your hand. And and at that point, you would assume that gender plays no role. And it's it's kind of weird that you still have that sort of male female mentality like, well, I'm a man. I'm stronger, faster, bigger. Well, no, you're in a video game. So that kind of goes out the window. But still, there's that psychological thing there, that wall Uh, that you've grown up with and been taught all your life that's still kind of there. I mean, you think, and I guess the flip of that Tiff is, do you, do you feel like you're on that same playing field? Like you're, you're on the same level as them or do you feel like you have maybe a disadvantage at all? I mean, I'd like to think that we're on the same level. I, you know, I put in just as much time into video games as other people. So why wouldn't I be on the same level? Right. And P- and speaking, I guess to that to the, I mean, you said you're part of PMS. They've done pretty well for themselves in terms of the pro- the professional atmosphere. I mean, a lot of those girls kick serious ass, and and they're they're just absolutely phenomenal in video games. But it, for for whatever reason, I think guys don't. Well, at least some of the pro gamers might not take them seriously. I mean, is that do you do you see that that they just sort of say, oh, that's the that's the girl clan. Yeah, they sometimes do well, but you know, they'll never be top two, top five in Halo. Is that what it's going to take? Having having the girls maybe break top ten or really do really really well, and maybe they haven't. That you know, I don't follow the MLG that much. Maybe they have, but I don't recall you know seeing them sort of take MLG or anything like that. I mean, you think if they did, it would break down that barrier a little bit? I mean, I think it definitely would. It would definitely gain the female gamers more respect in in the whole gaming arena. Um, but you know, it's. With the whole the whole clan, I mean, it it started out to give girls a safe place, right? And and definitely, what came out of that was more competitive female gamers. And even though you know, I feel like even since I've been in there since I guess two thousand seven, so you know, almost I yeah, for almost, yeah almost five, five years. years. Yeah. 
So even in that time that, you know, we've made great strides, but there's still a long way to go. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's it's especially in the, I think in the pro that that pro scene has got to be the hardest one to break into. I mean, it just we I think we already we still have a lot of trouble just in general with women in gaming, but for the pro, you know, that sort of like ridiculously strong testosterone, everyone's there to win. You know what I mean? No one's there to play casually at MLG. No one's no one's dicking around hoping they do well. I would assume everyone's there to win, and so it's kind of like if I feel like if you guys can break into that. Um, and really sort of show, show dudes like, Hey dude, it's, it's, it's the same. Uh, that would definitely be, you know, pretty big. That's an interesting topic. I mean, just, just the pro scene in general, um, and how it, how it treats women in general. I mean, cause like you, you know, guys are calling each other bitch and faggot and like, they just say the most crazy shit at those MLG tournaments. I mean, there, there are, those are the wolves that are, you know, really out there to win. Uh, and that's a tough competitive environment just, just for anybody. So, I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's kind of crazy to see, but, um, moving on from that, talking about the game specifically, I mean, we've seen, you know, FPS, MMO, we've got all these tons of genres. Uh, and I was looking at some of the stats and it turns out that most of the girl gamers, they sort of, they're attracted to the MMOs, they're attracted to, um, a lot of RTS story driven content and the FPS is kind of the opposite, right? I mean, most of the dudes play FPS, um, or if they play MMO, they're playing competitively. They're not sort of in this, they don't care about the story. They don't care about any of that stuff. Uh, and it was, it was a study I actually saw on Wikipedia about it through, uh, Gama Sutra. And they were saying, you know, they're in it for the story and they're in it for the, for the communicating and getting on the headset and talking and all that other stuff. You think that maybe that's why there is a little bit of the negative stereotype that guys are literally there to play the game and maybe sort of think, oh, well, she's just there because she wants to chat me up or, you know, she's looking to get hit on or whatever. I mean, there's a lot of those stereotypes I think that guys put out there. Like, oh, if you're a girl gamer, you're just lonely and you're looking for a dude. Like you hear, I hear that all the time. It, it's crazy. But I mean, do you, is there any validity to that? Or is there anything to be said to that? Well, I think my view of all that is a little bit skewed because I do know so many female gamers that right. play FPS. I mean, I, you know, pretty much all the girl gamers that I know, that's all they play. Yeah. So, you know, I may not be the best sample there for that for that piece. Yeah. I mean, what, and I mean, LB, do you do you think that's even true? I mean, because I was looking at those stats and I thought it was cr- it was crazy to me that they're saying because I agree with Tiff. I mean, most of the girl gamers that I know play FPS. Um, I don't, and I play MMOs myself and I don't see like that many. Um, it almost felt like a stereotype in and of itself that like, Oh, they don't, you know, chicks don't play FPS, but uh, you know, I I mean, what do you think about that? Is it? Well, if, if you're talking specifically console gaming or whatnot, I think, you know, the majority of, of, well, anyways, the majority of female gamers I've ran into are playing shooter type games or FPSs. Um, you know, if I've hopped into some some other random game or an Xbox Live game or something like that, I don't normally hop in or you know run into another female gamer. But yeah, right. it's it's a lot of your your AAA mainstream games, and I I don't know. I I don't think you know they're there specifically looking for a man. I think that's kind of <laughs> I think it's ridiculous. <laughs> well, you know, I found my man. <laughs> well, yeah, and there's and there's some truth to that too. I mean, people do. I mean, you are a great example of that. You know, you, you guys definitely found each other through gaming, um, you know, whether or not you're specifically like, I'm playing video games to find a dude. Uh, I don't think that's true. And I, and I would even go so far as to say is dudes are probably have that in the back of their minds as well. Anyone that meets anyone on, on really any platform, it can happen anywhere, right? It's not like you're specifically going in with that intention. Like, oh, I'm going to meet a chick tomorrow and we're going to get married. Um, <laughs> that's unlikely, I would say. Uh, and so when you see some like stories like your own, maybe that's what perpetuates that idea. Like that's, Oh, they're just in it for the social aspect. They actually don't care about the game itself. And it sort of drives that, that stereotype to keep kind of being, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy, if you will. I mean, I don't, I don't know. How do you feel about that? I mean, I can kind of see that, but you know, also, you know, I know that while I enjoy being social, I, I also enjoy playing games, and I right. think that's what drew us together, was we both love playing video games. Yeah. So, 
So finding people that enjoy the same hobby as you, just like anywhere else, you know, if if you found somebody that enjoyed cooking, you know, and you enjoyed cooking, then you would have something that, you know, that you re- can relate to each other right. on. No, it's, I mean, that's definitely true. And it, like I, I read some of this stuff and it just, it blows my mind. And it's, it's more, I think what it is, is it's more uh, what they think a lot of the, the reasoning is. They kind of make their, they draw, a lot of these people just draw their own conclusion out of something. They see it happen and they say maybe, oh, well, I, you know, here I see a bunch of girl gamers are playing um, and here's a bunch of male gamers and they're, they're, and I think they're right in the sense that when guys are really getting into FPS, they could, they don't give a fuck about what's happening in Master Chief, right? They don't really care about the story as it's happening. They're playing a competitive game to win. And they immediately think, well, there's no way a, the, the girl is actually thinking this. Like, there's no way. She's into why Master Chief is there and his emotional connection and like, oh, you know <laughs> what I mean? Like, they yeah. go through that sort of bullshit uh, and they draw their own conclusion. And, and we end up with, with these sort of stereotypes. And I guess, I guess on top of that, so do you think maybe, and, and this is an idea that I was, I was reading uh, before the show as well, that maybe what we need is more gender neutral video games and not necessarily more female driven video games. Cause a lot of the, I think a lot of the marketplace is trying to decide, well, do we build games with girls in mind or do we just build more games that are for everyone and sort of don't have, the male driven theme or whatever. What do you, what do you think the answer is to that piece of the puzzle? Cause they, the, the bottom line is the market wants more girl gamers cause it's more money. So, I mean, how do they get, how do they get the ratio to 50, 50? If it's, if it's now 80, 20, what, what is, what do they got to do to bring more girls into gaming? I think they need to create different games. Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't know if they can really, create games for everyone that's really going to hit the female audience. I mean, like you said before, you know, girls want to be able to have an emotional tie to the characters. They want a story, you know, but, but on the other side, you know, sometimes I don't mind, you know, <laughs> blowing a head off. So, you shot. know, it's <laughs> right. It, it definitely needs a, a, it definitely needs both. But I think that the story um, is, is a really critical piece. So I, that's a really good point. I mean, I think what you, what I think you're getting at is maybe gen, gender neutral in the sense that if you build it with all of, of the components that attract both girl uh, and male gamers, you're going to get both. I mean, you're going to, if you create a great story, but at the same time it's kick-ass gameplay, there's explosions everywhere and you can tie all those things together, then maybe you can attract both sides and you don't have to really play to one side. Um, which I, I mean, I 100% agree with. I think that's, and sometimes too, I think dudes don't mind the story. I mean, clearly guys love Mass Effect. They play it. It's huge. It's a huge game. And it's one of the most story-driven video games I think we've probably ever seen. Uh, so, you know, this idea that guys straight up don't like story is, I think, bullshit. I mean, there's, there's a component there um, that they clearly dig. And I think girls really are attracted to to that story as well. I, I know a lot of girl gamers that like specifically Mass Effect. They like that idea of, of a story being told over time. Uh, and, it, and it seems to be like that's one of, the, one of those games that really hits both sides um, pretty well. I mean, Hit, what do you think? Are you of the mind that we need to sort of take games and split them off and sort of segregate further or just kind of bring things uh, together, maybe more story and, and try to attract more girl gamers uh, to the industry. I mean, what do you think about that? Um, no, segregating is not, it's not good for anybody. Um, bringing them together is the only way to get everyone to like the same game. Yeah, and it, uh, go ahead. But I mean, it, it's, you see it in, in, in movies as well. I think it was what I was going to go. Is that, it's fair to say that, you know, a movie like, I don't mean, know, Judge Dredd, let's say. Is that is that really attracting a bunch of, of females to see that movie? Or is it that no. that genre needs to be sort of led in separate directions? You know, hey, we're going to go see. Is there is there going to be a time when we have the chick flick version of video games? Maybe that's what I'm asking. Hey, we'll go see the chick flick first and then we'll play Halo. Right. Like, is that is that where we're heading or, or no? If if we do get something like that, it. Or it's only specific to females, you're trying to say? Is yeah. that what you're trying to say, Duty? Yeah, I mean, like, you know, you've got, like, right now in, in movies, you've got the standard chick flick. Everyone knows what it is. 
It's a love story. It's a romance. It's a, it's a story we're all going to tear up at the end. You're going to cry to your mama. <laughs> but it's a, it's a standard. And, and I don't even think that people really place that gender role on that. They don't. It's like a, it's a normal thing that we've been seeing for years and years. You've got your action flick. You got your chick flick, right? Will we? Will that sort of uh, stereotype come into gaming? I guess is the question. Do you think you'll have the chick flick version uh, in games? Yeah, I, I could definitely see something like. Um, I noticed that a lot of women in my work are reading this book called Fifty uh, Fifty Shades of Grey. The, the, that, the book that you're is? currently yes. reading. Yeah. Okay. I can, I can see something like that coming to video game form, but. Who will play that? And I don't see any guys playing it. It's it's kind of like Halo. I don't really see that many more girls playing Halo than guys. So in that way, it'll just segregate. Like girls will play this game, guys will play that game. Uh, we need to get a game where both audiences will play each other. What What do you think, LB, with the, with the with the chick flick game? I mean, what do you uh, is it possible? I think, no, I, I think you're on crack. Cause like, okay, good. I I love you kind of hitman's example. Yeah, a Fifty Shades of Grey game, really? <laughs> I, yeah. I, no, Telltale, the, the game... Telltale does a game just like The Walking Dead, where it's Fifty Shades of Grey. That um, girls will be all over that. Well, let's ask. No, would know, would a girl no, be okay? Minute, I'll let on, you finish your on. thing because we gotta ask. I totally disagree. <laughs> I, can't, I can't wait to go in more in depth with this one. But uh, but okay, <laughs> go go ahead, LB. Let I mean, it the, the game has to be exciting. I don't think it means like your game has to have a female lead to appeal to female gamers. If your game is not exciting, if your game sucks, it sucks. Okay. <laughs> it's just how it is. And you were kind of going on about story. Well, yeah, Mass Effect 3 has, has a great story, but... On the other hand, Halo does have a great it story. Does. I mean, look sure. look at all the different books that sure. are spawned off of it. Look at like, you know, there was comic books. You you got normal books, and the story is still there. And yes, there are female Spartans, but it doesn't mean you know you can't have story or something to draw people in. It, it's it's not going to be like, okay, we need to make a chick flick version of a game so we can get more girls into games i i don't i don't see that i don't see a commercial coming on the tv where it's oh look at this love story video game that we're gonna have and all of a sudden you're gonna have this mass exodus of females going out buying 360s just so they can get this chick flick game well like tiff we saw in uh at e3 we saw a lot of the games like i wish i could remember all the names of them but they like beyond and all those like really story driven games and I look. I thought they looked fantastic. I was like, "Wow, it's really nice to see them going this like extra mile of story." Does that appeal more to you in terms of those like really like thick driven story, almost movie? I mean, we saw like what six or seven from oh, Sony. Yeah, like right? Tomb Raider. I well, Tomb am Raider, so right. excited for Tomb Raider. Let's talk about Tomb Raider because that it, that fits into the biggest stereotype of all, right? Chick with big titties, ridiculously thin. Yeah. I mean. Does is that offensive to you, or do you just not care? You're like whatever, you know. That's the body image thing. Does that go out the window? Because it's because that story does look kick ass. I mean, I'm with you 100 percent there. You know, that, that's a tough one for me to answer because <laughs> you know I play Lollipop Chainsaw. I right. thought that was a fun game, and you know I've never been a fan of cheerleaders. Right. And she had big boobs hanging out all over the place, and you could change her outfits, and you know. I, I think it's really how people interpret things. Like, if it doesn't bother you, you know, then then who cares? Right. Like, but I I do think there's a lot of people that kind of take take that a little too far. I mean, there's there's just as many beefed up, you know, awesome guys in video games. It's just the it seems like it's the females that really right. get the attention. No, and that's a good point. I mean, I think a lot of and a lot of stuff I was reading. I, I love that I'm. This is my thing now. I do research before the show. But a lot of stuff I was reading was, you know, they were saying, well, there's this ridiculous, you know, unrealistic body image, and it's totally offensive to to, to female gamers, and that's why they can't connect with their with their counterparts. And there's not enough heroes or, or heroines, I should say, um, and that sort but, of. But you know what? You know, you have to look at it. It's it's a video game, right? You, and as long as you look at it like that, it is supposed to be there to be fun. 
So it's it's not offensive to you then, I guess. Um, you know, if it's if if she's got a one inch waistline and seventy two inch bust, that does that doesn't affect it. It, it doesn't bother me, and that, you know, maybe I'm not the norm with with female gamers, but mm. it, it doesn't bother me because I know that that that's not realistic. Right. And like Tiff, actually, kind of kind of play on that. You uh, let's say Tomb Raider. And I think I already have the answer for this, but let's say Tomb Raider was a dude. Would you still be as excited for the game? Oh, that's interesting. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah. So. Absolutely. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just because, especially with that game, it's so cinematic, and right. and I don't think it would matter male or female. I mean, you're you're feeling just by watching everything that they're going through, the whole survival instinct. Yeah, and I have to agree with you 100%. I mean, when we when we went to go see that trailer, you were already excited about it. I could care less. I mean, I, I was like, this. I mean, it's another Tomb Raider. I just don't care. And then after we sat through that showing, I mean, I was like sweating. I literally walked out of there. I was sweating <laughs> because it was so tense. The whole time I'm like, oh, yeah, my God, this woman is going through. So-. And it was like ridiculous. And it was a great story. And uh, I don't think it would have mattered if it was a dude or not. I mean, I, I, I actually know. would love for it to be a male. <laughs> oh, yeah, really? Yeah. Like a hot dude in a fucking Speedo? Yeah, why not? Exactly. Well, I know, not I a Speedo. Care. No but, Speedo? You know. Okay. No, no speedo. Sans the Speedo. Yeah. But I, I have to agree. I mean, in, in that case, and I think Laura Croft in particular seems to be, maybe it's because she's one of the only ones. I mean, we don't like, it, it is true there are very few heroines in, in gaming. I, I mean, I know you said Lollipop Chainsaw. I'm trying to think just off the, off the cuff how many others there are, but she seems to be the pinnacle uh, of it. And through even the last, I mean, how long has she been out there? Almost a decade, I'd say. She has gone through some some changes. And I think now they're like toning the boobs down. They're sort of like Ooh. making her this more athletic body. She's not nearly as crazy as she used to be. Um, and maybe that's a direct relation to them wanting to connect with more female gamers. Maybe that's part of the equation because she's a strong female role model in that sense. Do you think that plays into it that maybe they're just saying, hey, let's embrace the girl side of things and maybe not go so far with the titties and maybe make her more of the strong, the strong type uh, to appeal to more female gamers? I mean, could, is that part of the equation? I think that's definitely what they're trying to do, um, you know, because they have received so many comments and so much feedback from the community at large that, you know, sh- her boobs are too big. You know, her <laughs> waist is too tiny. Like, <laughs> Feed this so, woman. So, <laughs> so I, you know, I definitely think that they're trying to, to tone her down to cater to more women. Interesting. And so I guess, the, again, the flip, dudes, hit, I'll ask you, if she was like this muscular, still a chick, but like super muscular, no boobies, right? Like wrestler type. Would you want to play that game? Or is it because she's like a hottie in, you know, next to nothing clothing that you're, you're kind of into the game more. Does, does that play any role for you? Cause I know, you know, when you see Spartan and you see, and you play Halo, you know, you don't want your Halo. You don't want Master Chief to be like chubby and he can barely get down some stairs, right? That's just not fun. You want to yeah, be but- here. We've never even seen how Master Chief looks. He could be like a scrawny little well, guy. Well, but we know. know. Come on. He's in a fucking seven foot tall suit. The dude is not, you know, packing Cheetos could be a every robot day. robot for all we know. Well, he could be a robot. <laughs> but, he's, but he's a strong ass robot. That's all I'm saying. So, no, I, so on the flip, does it matter? It matters. No? You don't care? No, to me, it doesn't. Uh, example I use is uh, Metroid. Um, the lead character is a female, and you right, never really ever see her face, and it doesn't really make a difference at all. It's still an exciting game. Yeah, uh, but no, I don't really see it being a, a factor. No. Well, I mean, touching on that's a great that's a great point to bring out. Touching on Samus, I and mean, when you were a kid, you played that game. You didn't know that Samus was a chick till the very, very end. Yeah, and, you, know, true. you played her the whole time, thinking this dude is kicking so much ass. He must have balls of steel, and now he has a vagina of steel. Actually, did that matter? Like when you kind of finished that game, was it something where you were like, "Oh wow, it's a chick." Wow. No, I, I was more like, oh, that was cool. <laughs> and then I would, I like tell other people, be like, yeah, this game, your lead character is a female and it's, she's cool. She's strong and stuff. Yeah. But yeah, no, and it didn't really matter. No. What about you? Did, it, did, it matter? did you play much? Or, I, that was one of my favorite games growing up. So it was like. Actually, I, I didn't play much 
much of Metroid at, at all. I played over at Buddy's a little bit, but it was kind of, yeah, I didn't, I didn't find a lot of draw for it for no. me. I just, it wasn't for me. So you're just sexist because you, fu- you found out it was a chick. I did. I found out And you out said, this is unrealistic. Like, no, not happen. No chick could take over an alien race and conquer. The- no, no, I won't buy it. Well, I mean, also kind of in part to kind of do a flip to one of your, your questions or whatnot. Loki in chat, he was bringing up, they do have the female version or the male version of Tomb Raider and it's called Uncharted. Oh, that's very true. Look at Loki. I mean, Hitting us with the knowledge. It's, it's the same thing. I mean, I, I go back to, it's all about the game. If you have a good game and yes, you do need a good story, but I don't believe it has to be driven to a gender. I think right. if it's a good story, a good game, you're going to be successful. If you have a crappy story with a crappy game, you're fucked. It doesn't matter if you're if you're you're gonna drive a tank and I'm gonna play Metallica in the background. It's all about <laughs> blowing up fucking commies. You know that doesn't mean it's gonna be any good if it sucks. Right. So then I guess and we seem to all be in agreement that we don't care. Maybe it's subliminal. Maybe we don't know. But I mean, it's the the, the problem is while we sit here and say it doesn't bother us and it doesn't matter, that's still we're still we still see the ratio: eighty percent dude, twenty mm-hmm. percent women. Um, and, you know, I mean, obviously there's a cultural shift happening, but it's still in place. And, and, to, and to attack that, I mean, I think the final question, which is, is, is one of my stronger questions, um, and I was even wondering if, whether it was even worth asking, is, so, you know, Tiff, you were part of PMS. Now, it's a good group. It brings people together. Like you said, it helped you. In a way, do you think, like, the, the girl green gamer groups hurt female gamers in the sense that it further segregates them and puts that label of, like, as you said, don't call me girl gamer, I'm just a gamer. But when you're a part of PMS, you're putting a giant flag up saying, I have titties and you don't. So mm-hmm. is that a problem? Like, it, are we seeing sort of a, a, a double negative there? I mean, what do you, what's the comment on that? I really think it's how that group decides to position themselves right you know there are definitely groups out there who who are like hey i'm a girl gamer come play with me (laughs) you know like so you know but i don't feel like pms clan is like that they've they've really made great strides to promote female gaming And, and yeah it does kind of segregate the female gamers but you kind of need to have a little bit of that segregation initially so that there's there's a movement. Right. So you have – it's like you kind of have to break it down before you can build it up. Exactly. Um, yeah. Uh, it, 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 because it's like you said, it's – you guys are definitely working against the grain uh, when it comes to just even PMS in general. Uh, you brought up a, you brought the point of the girls kind of being like – we're seeing more and more of these sites pop up that's like – and I know you probably know what I'm talking yes. about where it's oh yeah spend <laughs> give me ten bucks and right. and these are girls you propagating can play this. with a girl gamer right so what's yeah. your comment on something like that because that I mean that directly hurts any serious like it's hard to take a girl gamer seriously when it's like you give me fifty bucks we'll play a game for ten minutes and and you can you know yeah a- know. absolutely those are the groups that are giving a bad name to girl gamers is there is there any way that can be take I mean. Look, guys are lonely. Guys play video games. Generally, st- we have stereotypes of our own. We're the lonely dudes in our basement. Can't get a date. No, well, that's you, Jay. Oh, that's just me. That's fine. Yeah. Wow. Is that because I was gonna say I was because I've been I've been talking to a girl gamer fifty bucks a month. It's not happening. I don't know why. No, but is that is that sort of is there, is there any way out of that? I guess is the question. I mean, it seems like no matter what. That's gonna. That's that's kind of a normal of our society in general, right? The girls get more messages when they're on Match. dot com than the dude, right? That's just that's kind of the way it is. So is that is that just something we have to live with? Like we're just gonna have this sort of sideshow to gaming? I think you're always gonna have groups that are willing to take advantage of it. Yeah. Yeah, LB. What do you think about those? The, the sort of the the rise <laughs> of the chat me up. Well, I mean, honestly, I, I haven't seen too many of those, but is is this specifically like you'll log on and literally just play some Halo with this other, with a girl? Or is no it idea. like there's some 
side off time where you interact a little bit more. I mean, what are you going to do? That's the thing. Is like, what are you going to do? <laughs> You're playing I mean, Halo. I'm, I'm so confused by this. I don't know. I think we need somebody to research <laughs> this. <laughs> Hit, what are you doing this weekend? <laughs> you want to borrow 50 bucks? Do some research? I mean, it, it's the craziest. I could do a whole show on that because I just, I don't even, I don't understand that sort of level uh, no. where it gets, where the, you know, I mean, and that is... Trust me, that's definitely working against the grain there. But I don't know if that hurts. I don't know if that really hurts girl gamers because it's really it's sad for the dude, right? It's not sad it's for really the girl sad gamer. For it's the dude that's like really, really you're you're playing, you're spending I'm, money to play with a chick. Well, how bad is it? I mean, literally, it's the internet. It's not really hard to find porn, right? All right, and you're gonna pay fifty bucks a month to hang out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but porn female. does not talk back to you. Ah, there you go. Porn's not talking. Porn's you not don't saying get that interaction. Right. You're going to the wrong sites. <laughs> oh, Jesus, LB. This is a family show. Please. There are no rub downs here, sir. Stop it right now. No, but I think Tiff's right. Maybe it's just that it's the interaction between. That's what it is. It's like, you know, let's hang out. Let's. But I, I always find that strange. It's like, what do you, where, what is the, what is the conversation? Like, oh, baby, that headshot was just, mm, yeah. <laughs> like, what, or, like, what is it? deepest, darkest strat on <laughs> lockout. Let's go. It's terrible. It's terrible. I mean, right. I, don't I, I think we need an article for our site on this and we need some volunteers. Oh my God. I would, if someone would do go that, check this out. That is the best idea. I don't know idea. what they do. Yes. You know what you should do, Tiff? You should infiltrate. Oh, <laughs> You should infiltrate. I would totally pay for it too. If that's you go in and do a story on it, actually, that's kind of kind of neat. Bizarre. Like the whole undercover. I like that idea, honestly. <laughs> the whole sent in undercover. undercover. Should I use D Smooth as my gamer tag? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Please yes. do. Please do, and stream the whole thing. You know, I mean, why not at that point? No, I think that's. I think that was a really interesting sort of topic. Is like you know, it's, and that's totally separate. I think from what we've been talking about today. But it's it's you know, obviously it's from the girl gamer side of things. Um, but sort of the the reverse effect that it has on dudes, you know, and this this sort of the propagation of hey, I'm I'm a lonely dude in my basement, and I need you know some some companionship to play Halo with me. It's just it's crazy to me. I mean, it's it's such a it's such an interesting. A uh, little side project. I'll be shaking his head. He's so disappointed. Uh, not just, I'm just, uh, blown. You're I mean, I, I'm assuming those sites are successful because there's more than just one because exactly. Right. And you know, money's going to drive more. So, I mean, but just to believe they're getting so much traffic or so much income that there are enough dudes out there that just want to hang out in a game lobby or a game with a female oh, we, gotta do, <laughs> you know, we gotta do something like for facebook with like farmville you know what i mean we need uh, female companionship to help us till our oats <laughs> in farmville that's the next step oat tilling five bucks a month there you go <laughs> anyway with that we're gonna end the topic uh and i want to say thanks for tiff for coming on the show just to uh, being with three dudes to testosterone level is quite high so i appreciate you you know not not freaking out and coming out and teaching us all about the girls, females. I know what boys like. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Um, before before we go, LB, do you want to do you want to do up the uh, the releases this week? Want to do some releases? releases? Are actually pretty weak this week. Are they There's really not weak? A whole lot. What do we got? They've here? been weak lately. Yeah, I know, right? This summer's brutal, guys. Yeah. Can we get some dev developers to release some fucking games? Jesus. I actually got that, uh, what is it called? The Wreckage game from Xbox Live, where it's kind of like their answer to Angry Birds. I downloaded that a couple couple days ago. That's actually a lot of fun. But... Oh, Wrecketeer. Yes, thank you. Thank Wreck you. I don't even know what that is. Now I have to check it out. Yeah, it's pretty good. It, it uses the uh, Kinect, and you get to you know pull back the little ballista, and you shoot off your little projectile to take down the, the You said Kinect. The... My yeah, eyes just glazed over. <laughs> I immediately stopped caring. Uh, it's actually pretty fun. But... Zero um, okay. fucks. <laughs> Zero fucks. Yes. Exactly. Thank you. Yes. All right. But uh, for the, for, for, we'll do a couple of these because we are kind of out on time. It was a great topic. I actually had a great time. Uh, the topic. Right. But, uh, uh, Risen 2, Dark Waters, you go ahead. multi-platform release. Eh. It's another sequel to Risen. Whatever. God, you're so horrible at this. 
I am. I, <laughs> your I lack just, of inc- your lack of excitement is what it is. You gotta you gotta put there's some, not, okay. Some, there's some orcs must die. Look, orcs must die too. Is or orcs must die is yeah. a great game. Tiff knows. Uh, that's what I'm. That's, yeah, that's a fun game, but it's only on PC. Mm. Oh. Well, the second one's only on PC. Yeah. See, that's okay for me. I'm a PC gamer. That's fine for me. So I can be excited about that. Orcs must do the sequel to the action strategy game. The objective is to, you guessed it, kill puppies. My mistake. Kill orcs. See? It's happy. Everyone loves that. Everyone wants to play now. They, they're really excited. No? Is there yeah. anything else on that list before we go? Anything? Ooh, 3D Solitaire. <laughs> and with that, we're going to end the show. Yay. Thank you, everybody, for coming. LB, where can, they te- where can they get in touch with your feminine side? Wow. Yeah. Oh, you can send me a tweet on Twitter at L-B-S-U-T-K-E. Lady Hitman. <laughs> Queen of Canada. <laughs> Where can they find you? You can find me on Twitter at I6Hitman uh, and on my gaming channel at twitch.tv forward slash I6Hitman. And the lovely, soon to be Nolan, Tiffany, Electrify Fire. Where can they hit you up? You can hit me up <laughs> at <laughs> twitter.com slash electrify. I freaking and love I that. And I am also promoting my new action figures. <laughs> wow. Uh-huh. Do they fight in real time? Do they have movable limbs? Does, yeah, that, does yeah. LB have a kung fu grip? Look, look. Oh, LB, wait, wait. Oh, LB is going to shoot you. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably the greatest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> and if for some reason... You want some little gems of knowledge? You can come and hit me up on twitter.com slash D O O D I R O C K. That's Dude I Rock. So, uh, with that, next week we are going to have the dev for Natural Selection 2 or the PR guy. We, I don't remember already, but uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. So, if you want to come on and ask some questions about asynchronous gaming, you can. Don't forget Land Party, Chicago. Be there, 9th through the 11th. November, Halo 4, two days before we'll be released. We'll have a giant LAN party. We'll all give high fives and we'll probably be drunk by like 2 o'clock. And from that point on, God knows. After it's released. After, After it's released. It's really, After not before. Released. That would be crazy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thanks, guys, for coming. And we will see you all next week. Peace out. <laughs>